Okay, so with the Unicode, um, our life is going to get really easier. So it seems like if I have the Unicode of 65, so well in this case 65 is mapped into a capital A, and I say Unicode of 65 as a letter, I should definitely get an A. And let's actually see that in the code. So I'm going to get a Unicode of 65 as a letter, and voila, you have a capital A. What about small a? So I should get 97. So if I have 97 here, 97, you have a small a. All right. So it seems like 65, 97, 66, 98, 60, sorry, 66, 98, 67, 99. So it seems like there's like a three, 32 um, units of difference between the small A and capital A. So if that's the case, if I operate of a plus and then add a 32 and say, okay, whatever number you have, if it's small, let's say, you're gonna get a Unicode of A. So let's say you're gonna get the Unicode of a, small a, sorry, a capital A. And then plus 32 should give you a 97. And Unicode of a 97 as a letter should give you a small a. So this is exactly opposite to what you have to do because here you have the capital one and you get the small one. So if I want to do vice versa, all I have to do is to make this a small a, and then I think you don't need a plus, you probably need a minus. So Unicode of a small a, which is 97, minus 32, that will give you the 65, then you replace it, and there you go. So one line versus a bunch of lines pretty cool huh all right so now we learn how to use the unicode and that way our life is going to get easier all we have to do is to find what's the difference between the capital versus small one and apparently there's a 32 difference all right now let's go back with basically rewriting this code with this new case. So if I have some of the names to be capitalized already, then I'm in trouble. So I always have to check an if statement and say if the Unicode of the first letter is basically bigger than 96, in that sense, it is a small letter because we just saw here starting 97 going on downward actually let's make this a slide show based on current slide okay and let's use our pen tool come on pen there we go. So if we have 97 and starting going down, we are assured that our letters are all small. And if that's the case, I can easily use the formula that we just computed, which is getting the Unicode of letter A, in this case is 97, minus 32, so I will get the capital A. I will get 65. So going back to this case, you need to always check this if statement if oops if the unicode of your first letter is greater than 96 then go ahead and do the math and make it capitalize and once that is done then go ahead and add the the second elements to the last second letter 
second uh, letter all the way to the last letter to your first capitalized letter, just the way that we did with Anna Marina. All right, and then at the end when you're done, go ahead and set the first item of your global list to this new concatenated or summed up letter. We just to use different um, kind of variable name. No difference, nothing has been changed here. Okay, so let's make sure we're comfortable with this. For each item inside your global list, so for each of these element items, go ahead and find the first letter of those items. So basically get the A, get the S, get the A, uh oh, we're talking about this one. Get the A, get the S, get the A, get the T and T. And then if the Unicode of that first element was greater than 96, in this case all of them are, which is a good sign, go ahead and convert it to your first letter to the capital letter because you're going to get the Unicode of the first letter, which is 97, for example, in the first case, which you have an A. Minus 32 is going to give you a 65, and Unicode of 65 as a letter it gives you a capital A. So you get the capital A, and then you're going to set the concat to the first letter, which is you have the first letter, and you're going to get your first letter, and from letter, and you want to join it, basically join the first letter to the rest of the letters. And because we already put the first letter into a new variable called concat, you're joining the concat with the rest of the, with the, rest of the letters through a for loop that starts from 2 and goes all the way to the length of your items. And at the end, you're just going to write down your concatenated element, in this first case, Anna Marina, into the first unit, first space or placeholder of your global list. And then you're going to go move on to the next one. And this is a very interesting code. This is something that you have to feel very comfortable with, understand every pieces of it. Um, please feel free to code this up and walk through every line. Make sure you're comfortable with every line. And this is extremely important. All right, now let's move on to some functions of your list. And one of them is called map. So what does map do? Map is basically uh, an element is an element-wise um, function. So in this case, let's say you want you have three values in your list, which are seven, eight, and one, and you're interested in computing the three times of seven. Sorry, three times of seven plus seven. So basically, three times seven is twenty-one. Plus seven is twenty-eight. 8 times 3 is uh, 24, plus 7 is 31, and 1 times 3 is 3, plus 7 is 10. So you want to do this operation of 3x, three, 3 times x plus 7, and x is going to be 1 by 1 each element of your list. The first time is going to be 7, the second time is going to be 8, the third time is going to be 1. So Noted that when you use the map function, you always have some empty space. And that empty space is automatically inferred as, okay, the first one can close in, and the operation will be computed, and then the result will be written over here. And then the second element is going to go inside this, and then the operation will be executed. So you're going to get the 3 times 8 plus 7 and that will be overwritten in the second element, second part of your um, your list. And then the third one, the same thing is going to be overwritten here, and the operation will happen, and then you go back and write it into the first part, the first, uh, the, sorry, the third part of your list. Okay, so now let's say I want to do something different. Let's say I want to find the first letter of each of these um, elements inside your list. So that means I want the first letter of, again, an empty space. And then automatically knows that it will go 
the the first element will go in and then the second element will go in and the third element will go in and the first letter of the first element is W the second element of it is sorry the first element of it is Y the second element is W and the third element is D capital D okay let's go on with a different function let's say I want to compute the square root and for square root I know that I have to get the value and multiply it by itself that's why you have two empty spots so don't get confused by it it's basically whatever you have times itself so it gives you the square root but if I were to create like x3 which means this one times this one times itself so then you had times an extra uh, empty space here so it would be one two three empty spaces okay so nothing magical let's implement one let's implement actually the x squared to get an idea so hmm, I already have one global variable and it contains names so let's create another global variable And we're going to add 6, 7, 8 into it. So let's see. Make a variable. Or make a block first. Make a variable. So let's say global list of numbers. Okay. Now I am going to make this global list of numbers a list so I have to set it to to be a list okay actually I didn't need this and I'm gonna add let's say seven eight and nine into this list and now I'm gonna drag in the map function and I'm gonna say map whatever over this list and my list is called global list number and I know inside my map I need to have empty elements so if I want to create a square root I need to have these two if I want to create actually square and uh, x cube then this is what I get so I expect to get 7 to the power of 3 8 to the power of 3 and 9 to the power of 3 in a list and it crashes type error list add is not a function well let's see what we made a mistake of okay this is not what I need. Thank you for crashing. And let's go back to the slides. Hmm. A map of did -did 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 over your list. And this is exactly the same. So why are we getting this error? Type error list at is not a function. Oh. Well, that's weird. Let's see. What if I drag this list here? Oh, that is so weird. So basically, if I just drag the name of the global list, it doesn't work. But if I just put the actual content of it, it works. Well, those bugs that you never figure out why you have it. All right, so now this is seven times seven times seven is 343, and that's correct. Nine times nine times nine is 729. Um, all right, now we're comfortable with the function map. Let's move on to using a map for iterations. So basically for each item, inside your map then go ahead and do something and inside this map let's see what's going to happen so 
you have to get the first letter of your global list. So you have a list. So this map is going to give you capital A, S, capital A, T, T. And then for each element inside of it, if that element was equal to capital A, count that and then at the end say the count. Okay, obviously in this example, what do you gonna get? What are you gonna get for the count? So you should definitely get a two. And why is that? Because for each item inside this map thingy, let's actually make sure we're comfortable with what's going to be inside this map thingy. So map the first letter of your list. And the first letter of your list is A, S, small s, capital A, T, and T. So this is what your map is going to give you. And for each item inside this thing, so the first for each item, okay, go ahead. And if that item was equal to A, in this case it is, in this case it's not, in this case it is, in this case it's not, and the last case is not. But for those cases, if it's equal to A, go ahead and change the count to 1. And obviously, because there is no count specified earlier, that means the original value of the count was 0. So now when you're changing it by 1, it will become 1 at the beginning. So in this scenario, the count becomes 1. Very well done in the handwriting. And in this case, the count will become 2. And once your for loop is over, so we, we reach all the way down here, and you want to print out the count, the count is going to give you 2. Okay, so now we learn how to use the map function inside a for loop. That is cool. Now, how do you keep the desired element in a list? Now, there's another function called keep. And this is a very useful function. Basically, the output of this function is a subset of your original uh, list. So in this case, if you have this original list, you're interested in keeping the elements inside that global list for which a certain functionality is you know, kept. For example, in this case, you're interested in keeping the elements, items that are equal to, so the, let, the first letter of Oops. The first letter of your your <clears throat> your items inside your list is equal to A. So basically you want to keep this one and you want to keep this one. And obviously you can see the results. It's keeping the ones that the first letter of it is A. If this one was the last letter Okay, so instead of one, it was the last. Then what do you think could have been kept? Obviously, it would be both these two guys because both of them finish with a A. But hang on. I'm not sure if this is going to return back. Let's actually check this because I don't know if the capitalization is maintained or not. So it's a good practice. Let's see. So we're going to find the word keep and we're gonna say keep the items such that from the list and let's grab a list and inside my list I want to keep few words Anna Marina and Anna itself and a bunch of other things let's say this and that whatever all right now I have four elements inside this list and I want to keep the item such that let's go to the red stuff so that uh, item item last of the list let's make sure we're doing it correctly so oh actually no we're doing it wrong so letter la letter last of not item that was not cool 
So first you need to have an equal, and then you need to have a letter. Letter. Let's say letter last. Oh, it doesn't do that way. Well, I know in other program languages, if you say letter negative one of the word, or negative the, and this has to be empty because I think this has to be empty. Let's see. Oh yeah. So keep is also just like map. You have to keep that element empty. So it will know that every time it goes through the list, it has to implement, it has to replace the items of your list with this empty, I mean, with this empty placeholder. So letter last is equal valent to A. Go ahead and find them. Well, in this scenario, is the letter last of these things equal to A? I think none of them should be returned because none of them has a capital A. Let's see. Great, nice, sweet. But if I put a small a, then both Anna and Anna Marina should be returned. Ooh, that's not cool. That's definitely not cool. So these two were not returned. And why is that? Because it does not recognize that letter negative one is actually the last letter, which is sad. So what if, if I put a capital A? Oh, that is not interesting. Okay, a sad news. Obviously, when you want to check, the, the key sensitivity is basically useless. So if I put a small a or capital A, in both cases, if the first letter is A, no matter what, you're gonna get, get to keep the item such that um, the first element of it is A. It doesn't matter if it's capitalized or small. And the other thing is you can't really find the last letter, apparently. You can't really put letter negative one. It doesn't work. So if you want to find the letter, basically the last letter, you have to do it in a different way. Right? You have to do a for loop for each of the letters inside your element. And then once you hit the last one, then do whatever you want with it. Yeah, it's a bummer. Other program languages have this capability to access the last letter right away, but it's okay. Snap doesn't want to give it us. Okay, now let's go back to our slides. All right, assignments. So this is the other assignment that we're supposed to deliver. And for this assignment, uh, you're going to complete the following lab work all the way to the end and that will give you a bunch of homeworks on the list okay make sure you do all of these things now let's go back to our website uh, da, 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 da. that is not here so let's go to our website Lab week eight. Oh no, no, lab week seven. All right, so you have two choices to implement the lab work. You can use the list lab from BGC, and you can either complete the single challenge, which is the following or you can alternatively complete six slightly less challenges, challenging blocks. I would say start with the second one. Second one is really important because for your midterm, probably you're gonna see something similar to your second one. So start with second one. If you have more time, go ahead and do the first one. For the first one, you have to make sure you, uh, when you're creating a sentence, the first letter is capitalized and then plurality of the nouns and all those things is being taken care of. But for the second one, you're gonna deal with map and join and bunch of, sorry, map, join, probably um, 
keep all those things in your second homework and honestly i would recommend before you really start go ahead and do the stuff over into this link this is very helpful if you do lab one lab two and lab three to get very comfortable with math keep combine and uh, nested listing also the list structure itself um, it might look a little bit too advanced but trust me if you get comfortable with these three then there's nothing that I can give you that you will not be able to solve all right okay so this is about it good luck with the homeworks and regarding the midterm we got the raw values I think I'm gonna work on it to put it on a curve so that way the grades will come up a little bit higher because so far I think the highest grade that I've seen is 85 and yeah and the mean so far was around 50 so we we definitely need to curve things up okay and good luck sorry that I can't be in the campus tomorrow and um, hope you guys enjoy the videos see you guys